The uh, mics are all working because I appreciate the. Ooh, yeah, they're working. <laughs> <laughs> And happy day. This is Esther Davis. I'm so happy that you are with us today. I always want you to call someone because I have some very special guests on. And you keep telling me that they're special. So I know that they're special. Get your Bibles ready. Get a pen and paper because I always write when Bishop Joe is in town. <laughs> I have to write down. And then this is a guy. I hope I know you all remember. This is the guy that gives me his notes. What religious leader do you know that gives you his notes? How you doing? Because life is all about sharing. I'm it good. It is. It's a pleasure being with you today. It is wonderful to have you back. And uh, you are, I have to tell our audiences that I asked for an analytical report. Is that right, Remy? Yes. Okay. It's analytical. We were up to more than eight. Point five thousand people just on Facebook. Wow. Our audiences great. are explosive. So that means you're awfully good looking, awfully handsome, and people love what you got to say. <laughs> <laughs> who's this uh, who's this young guy? He's Divine Vanga Samuel Jumbo. Whoa. Yes. Sam Jumbo. You know the Sam other Jumbo. time we had a Divine Vanga Cecilia. Cecil. Yes, Cecilia was great. Yeah, the was ombudswoman. It? Now yes. we have the ombudsman, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sam, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. What is you. it like to travel around with the bishop, the great bishop, Joe? Oh, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. <laughs> I'm learning a lot, so. Uh, <laughs> well, I think he's great. teaching the world. He, uh, he is the grand teacher. He is the, in my head, just the teacher of the world for world peace. And we appreciate you so much. Uh, I've never done a show quite like this before, where we're able to go directly to the Bible mm -hmm. and get the answers. And I write them down. We're asking you to write down the scriptures at your leisure, mm -hmm. at your leisure. Um, look them up. So what are we going to talk about today, Bishop Joe? Well, let me do something that my audience would think. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, yes, sir. in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. now and forevermore. Amen. Do you know why I use that word? Why? The name of the Lord Jesus Christ is so sacred that when you use that word, you must speak the truth. And okay. we are here not to share religion or to share politics, but to share the brotherhood of life and humanity, okay. where we must come together because everybody is looking for God. Agreed. But nobody's looking for God where he can be found. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the only, pla where, only place you can find God is in one another. In one another? Yes. We have a problem with that, Bishop, mm -hmm. Archbishop. You're from Atlanta, right? We yes. have a problem with each other. Yes. So, so what, I mean, how do we get to be better? Because the one problem we have is this. Everybody is looking on the other, on the facial structure on the skin texture, mm -hmm. on the vocabulary or the language, right? Right. But nobody is applying one principle. All of they read the Bible, especially the Christians, even the Muslims in their Quran, have one thing that is told them. The Bible Christ taught in the Beatitudes, I think, Matthew chapter five, verse eight. He said, blessed are the pure in heart, mm. for they shall see God. And what does it translate to mean? If your heart is pure, you see, every human being you see, you see God in him. Because when you say you're looking for God in the sky, there's one irony of it. When you keep looking like this, you're searching yeah, for God yeah, in the sky, yeah. two things will happen. You will get dizzy, <laughs> vertigo will set in, and you may faint. But when you're looking at eye level, what you see at every point, east, west, north, or south, is a fellow man and fellow woman. We don't like our fellow men. That is where you don't like God. Oh, yes. well, that's sort of... Nailed it down. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, there's a statement God made. Say, now let us make man in our image after our likeness. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, let us make white man or black man or brown man or pink man. He said, let us make man. But the problem we have today is, okay, that glass you're using is white with some paintings. This mic is black, you know, and this one is a bit gray. We are looking at the painting on the container. We don't look at the content. We don't look at the content. We just look at the, as Out, you said out, earlier, the outside. The outside, yes. So in every man, the same spirit exists. 
God is one, the Spirit is one. But depending on the environment and the nature of work He has assigned you to do, He sends you to that environment. If you have to go to a Caucasian American family, you must be, you must be pale skinned, you must have silky mm -hmm, hair, mm -hmm. straight nose, and thin lips. Right. If He's right. sending you to African American family, you must have kinky hair, dark skin, broad, uh, maybe broad nose, and thick lips. Because yes. that is where the content is going to do the work in that environment. But now, unfortunately, we developed the concept oh, because it came with slanted eyes from the Orient. It must only function for the other Chinese or for the Japanese or for the Indonesia, uh, this, you know, those areas. Right, you came right. from India, you have the dusky complexion, you must function as an Indian. But if we realize that God is in all of us, wherever we are, any man we meet, is the image of God. Now give us that scripture again, because I write down scripture. You said Genesis? Chapter 1, verse two, 26. 26. Yes. Wow. I wanted to talk a little bit about retirement, because we have all of this retired talent. When I say retired talent, I mean people that have retired from an original job. I want to know what your answer is to what do we do after retirement? I don't think God intended for us to sit down after 65, get your Social Security check, get your pension and do nothing. <laughs> I mean, I'm just a little baffled by that. Now, we are doing some other things, yes. uh, Brother Sam. We're doing, we're taking vacations. Yes. And, and then I wonder, uh, seriously, I wonder where's the inflation if we are traveling, vacationing, and the airports are just packed mm -hmm. with people going on. So where is the inflation or is that a lot of hype? It's but retirement is, is one of my hot buns because so many people ask me, oh, you still working? I don't want to retire. I, d I think that is the worst thing you do with your mind, with your mm -hmm. mind. But you know, the, uh, the, f the funniest part of it, even the scriptures had a very interesting answer. Okay. Psalm, Psalm 90 verse 9 and 10 said, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our days as a tale that is told. All of our days. All of our days. So the days of our years are three score and ten. That is seventy years. Mm -hmm. And if by reason of strength they may be four score years, that is eighty years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and will fly away. Meaning that we have a limited time. You might retire from active service, collect your gratuity, collect your pension, but the brain is not retired. That's, that's right. The brain is, well, it retires if you don't use it. Yes, you don't, we don't use it because what they do is the government looks at it, okay, if, instead of you to work till you drop into the grave and you don't have any time to achieve any other objective except wake up in the morning, go to Starbucks, get a mug of coffee, <laughs> drag yourself to work, clock in and clock out. <laughs> what a waste! Right. What a waste! Yeah, so we keep living a monotonous existence, every day recycling the same thing. Right. But when you're given time to retire now, the brain is removed from the pressure of clocking in and clocking out. Mm -hmm. Now you can put the brain to use. Even your experience, people write books when they retire. People share knowledge. The mm -hmm. philosophy, your yeah. encounter, all you went through, your failures, your successes. Why there's so much problem in the society is those who have passed through the grind, you know? Now, when they retire, they retire with their experiences and the knowledge. The next generation don't have anything to fall back on. That's right. And we share haven't told the, the next stories. Generation. We haven't yes. told the stories. Yeah. Yes. Have you said, yeah. am I right? Yes, exactly. I, I feel that um, we've, as a society, as a people, we've lost you know, the original way of living. Mm -hmm. Because when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, God told Adam that he has to till the ground to provide for both his wife and his seed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all the days of his life. Mm -hmm. He never said, he never put a time frame on it. He said that all the days of your life, you must till the ground. That is what God told Adam. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now, in this in today's day and age you know you know we have you know up until 65 of course like our age <laughs> has now decreased and diminished <laughs> a ton since yes. the beginning yes uh, because Adam lived for 930 years mm -hmm. um, and that's because wow. he lived according to the law of God um, and even though he sinned 
you know, uh, at that time, sin wasn't as abundant as is, as is today. As is today. Um, so I believe that if we go back to that original lifestyle that existed in the Garden of Eden, where we, you know, coexisted, you know, going back to the last topic that was dis- discussed, we mm-hmm. coexisted with all life forms, you know, not just human beings, right. but also right. animals as well. Because in the Garden of Eden, before sin, there was no killing there was no death whatsoever Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so if we go back to the original form that we were intended to be created then a lot of the problems that we see today will not exist I'm so happy to hear that from you because you look like you're not quite 50 yet. <laughs> and and then, yeah. no, that makes sense. He's far, he's far from 50. Yeah, he's far from 50. <laughs> so that's a very important message yes. coming from a young so, so that citizen. The next generation will know that it doesn't cease with the older generation. No, it mm-hmm. does not. But yeah. then when you have that much wisdom and that candor, from this generation, mm-hmm. it, it really means a lot. Um, and the old teaching, the young. We have the guests, they're back. Uh, this Bishop Joe, Archbishop Joe. Uh, Your Grace, we do miss you, but we're having a lot of fun without you until you come back. So, <laughs> and while he was speaking, I'm going through your notes again. Da 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 da. And he says, um, what then causes man to die? Is it possible for man to escape death? Yes. I'm reading the bishop's notes, mm-hmm. and I'm always intrigued with this <laughs> part of the show. <laughs> yeah, you know what, like Sam said earlier, you know? They said righteousness uplifts a people, but sin is a reproach. Mm-hmm. Sin brings fear, sin brings death. Like he said in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1, he said, the wicked runs when no man is pursuing but the righteous are bold as lions. Bold. Yes, as in bold, B-O-L-D, B-O-L-D, bold, bold, confident. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you find them, they stand their ground. And because man has lost touch with reality, immortality is possible. Even science has proven that our cells regenerate every night. Mm -hmm. As we lay our head to sleep, that's the chance for the cells to regenerate. And science is proving that even the brain itself it's not static. The brain keeps growing as we keep growing and living. So naturally, man has an opportunity, like you said, Adam lived 930 years. Gradually, Methuselah lived for 969 years mm-hmm. until he started diminishing now. We're given 70, and even the 70 were struggling to catch up. Before 40, a lot of people have it. diabetes, high well, blood pressure. we're so sick at 50. Hypothet- mm-hmm. Yes, because we do not follow the natural order. Even our menu is a big challenge, you know? Is. Because we eat the animals for protein, right? We yes. claim so. Yes. We have to eat beef, eat mutton, eat chicken for protein. Then the question is, where does the what does the cow eat to get the protein we take from the cow? Yes. What does what the goat the eat? <laughs> they eat the grass. And mm-hmm. God gave man food, said of every herb bearing seed, mm-hmm. and of every tree that has fruit upon the face of the earth, to you it shall be for meat. So our menu, our lifestyle contributes to our short life on earth. Mm -hmm. Because God did not make our body to process flesh. Our body is meant to process vegetables and fruit. That's why Mm -hmm. our intestines are long, to process herbs. Yeah, like 32 feet. Yes, we are naturally herbivores. Mm -hmm. But we left left a herbivorous life, we call ourselves omnivores. We even consume to the point of consuming fellow human flesh. You know, so yeah, like consume that word. That word is resonates with mm. me because we consume. Yes. Yes. Everything. Yes. And too much of it. Mm. Too much. We of are it. an obese mm-hmm. nation. Mm-hmm. Yes. And and we continue. Are we ignoring that fact? I mean, that's directly related to your health. Yeah, because mm-hmm. we are we are living in a situation of self hate. Self what? Hate hatred. We hate ourselves mm-hmm. because if you love yourself, the medical science has it that it's either you eat your medicine as your food, or you eat your food as your medicine. Mm-hmm. So when we eat the food prescribed by God and live the life prescribed by God, because you're asking, is it possible for man to live forever? Right. Now we are living in a very permissive society. Permissive? Yes. A young girl at 14 feels that she's a freak because she's still a virgin. The archbishop said, 
Um, provocative. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason I said it, so many uh, religious leaders won't go there. But mother, let me call you mother. Sure. Because you are one. Mm -hmm. Oh, the yes. Prob the problem we have on earth is this. Men prefer to be politically correct instead of following the truth. Mm -hmm. And our Lord Jesus Christ, when Pilate asked him, what is your mission? He made a statement, and we, America claimed to be a Christian nation, but there are many run from the truth. He said, for this cause came I into the world, and to this end was I born, that I might bear witness to the truth. And what is the truth? The society is so permissive, even they don't even call it fornication again, it's called fun. It's called fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's not called adultery. It's called men having, oh, called trying to flex your muscles outside the, the boredom of the marriage. So when you get too bored with it, you start to experiment so that there'll be a spice to flavor up the life. But the scriptures call it fornication and adultery. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. our father leader, Olumba, Olumba, Obu, I'll tell you this and it's going to shock you. But I have to say it to the audience. You're not going to shock said, me. I don't know. I shouldn't say that. Okay, that's say I'm it. coming to it. He said, for one sexual encounter a man has with a woman, that once, that the energy you spent is enough to last you for 42 years of existence on earth. What? 42 one years. One encounter. One encounter. Mm -hmm. You dispense 42 years of your life. Mm -hmm. We need to dissect that. I didn't. I didn't know that. But that is, that's why the supernatural teacher has come, because he has come to bring us to the reality so that we know where our problems come from. Yes. We blame everybody. Nobody wants to blame me. We, we like to tread blames. Oh, yeah. like Adam in the garden. Oh, Adam, why did you eat what I told you not to eat? He said, Father, I did not do it to. The woman you gave me, she gave me to eat. So it's not my problem. I see. Wow. So all of this sex we're having, Yes. It's meaningless. Meaningless. Yes. The essence of it is just for procreation. Yes. And one encounter is enough to procreate and reproduce the species. Every other thing is satiating our lower basal instincts. Mm -hmm. Remy, did you know that? <laughs> uh, every time they come, I learn something. Uh... Yes. Can you say that again? <laughs> yeah. So every time you it's every, have an Yes, mm -hmm. so every sexual encounter you have, that what you expend is enough to last you 42 years of existence. Yeah. Just imagine a man who had to take all the Viagras and all to be a superstar. Hey, man, I got the babe. I, I, I went on her five times in a night. Right. Multiply five times and 42. In one night encounter, you've given up 200 years of your existence. That means we diminish our existence. You diminish your existence. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is that mindset uh, that you have to have sex five or six times a night or you have to have an orgy? What is that? Is that just ego? Is that just greed? What is that? It's just the carnality of that is the fleshly nature. In the, I think in Galatians chapter 5 verse 7, mm -hmm. it said... Galatians, hold on a second. Galatians chapter 5 verse 7. Let me this read. is what we love about the Archbishop coming and because the scripture dictates what we talk about. Mm -hmm. And I'm writing this down now with Galatians 5, 7. The other scriptures today has been Proverbs, Genesis 1, 26. So, oh, I'm sorry. I, I had a personal question. Yeah, Remy <laughs> has a personal <laughs> question. Yeah, absolutely. Sure, no. I'm, I'm not sure if I have it right. This, this, it could be a rumor that got started that mm -hmm. a lot of my No. Uh, have you heard this? Uh, yes, yes. 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 She's like the, yeah. She comes in your dream. She's like the, the, the sex demon. Or, I mean, mm. No, you know the story. Mm. About I've heard yes. about the story, but that is a more of a human imagination. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. when God created them, you know, God, they didn't know the reason why God brought them together. Originally, from the creation story, mm -hmm. say God made Adam. Mm -hmm. Then later, He said it's not good for man to be alone. And from the man, he extracted the woman, meaning that man was a complete p p being. Mm -hmm. But for procreation purpose, there's need to create another agency to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, when he brought forth the Eve, God gave them a condition. And when they talk about what is that original sin, 
people run around it a lot, but when they say the Satan told the woman that you, God said the fruit at the center of the garden, you should not eat, that when you eat, you shall die. What is the garden? Man is the garden. It's not a farmland. Man no. is the garden. Man is the garden. So when you go to your home, in your bedroom, stand before your mirror, look at your body. What is the fruit at the center of your body? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Remy, we, uh, <laughs> this is so, this is so profound. Thank you. Thank you, Remy. Remy yes. is our trusted. That's a rumor that people Yes. No, yeah. That you're I've absolutely. had another wife. She nah. could bear his kids and so. Adam mm -hmm. had no wife because, because God had not told him the reason why he brought the two of them into existence. God had a roadmap that there must be procreation God because he told roadmap. them increase and multiply. But when you're given a job, even in a normal human institution, they give you terms of reference, right? This is what is expected of you in your capacity to do this, this that, that, that. At this point, you get to the next level. There's another person either mm -hmm. ahead of you or below you. In that structure, the organization works very well, right? When God met them, he has already told them, increase and multiply. They should have waited. He would tell them how they would do the increase. Mm -hmm. That is why as soon as Adam had that intimacy with Eve, the scripture said their eyes opened. And when God yes, came again, does. as yes. he used to mm -hmm. visit them, Adam, who used to walk about Balls Bay, no problem, he didn't notice anything, <laughs> suddenly noticed that he was naked. <laughs> and God asked him, how, who told you you were naked? Mm -hmm. He said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I hid myself because I'm naked. They asked him now, have you eaten that fruit which I said you should not eat? Yes. Meaning, have you fornicated yeah. mm -hmm. against my own ordinances? Mm -hmm. He said, eh, Father, I did not do it. The woman you gave me. The woman that you gave me. She gave me to eat. <laughs> that is to tell God, well, it's not my fault. You didn't tell me what it is for. And so, we still have that today. We yes. don't take accountability, accountability. for what yes. we yes. are doing. Yes. We're always running away from our own situation. And we have yes. to blame the blame game. Yes, mm -hmm. trading, mm -hmm. trading places. Yes. Trading places. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he is Archbishop Joe. He comes on the Esther Davis show as often as we can get him here. Sam, so, is he always this animated in services? I mean, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Both him and Archbishop. Oh, <laughs> Archbishop yeah. Archbishop they're, they're, just... they're very... They're very uh, animated because they love the word so much. Yes, yes. You know, and um, that comes clearly through. Exactly, exactly. It's and how do the young fine. people react to that? Are they spellbound uh, or are oh, they yeah. just dismissing we, it? We, no, not at all. Not at all. Every word that comes out, we adhere to uh, because we know that it comes from the heavens above um, down to them. Mm -hmm. And, you mm -hmm. know, through their lips, you know, the word of God is issued. Uh, so because of that, we take it very seriously. And I remember you asked a question. Yes. The source, and we made a mistake. It was Galatians 5 verse 17. Oh. Not 7, 17. Oh, 17. And it said okay. clearly, say, for the flesh lusted against the spirit. This is the container. The content is always at war with the container. Because the demand, you know, sometimes even those who kill, they tell you a voice told them. The difference between the killer and the man who was unable, who, who couldn't kill, was because he was able to resist that inducement. Yes. Yeah. He stood against it. He said, "The flesh, this lost it against the spirit, because man is a dual nature. The container is this, the flesh. The spirit within is the force that rules our existence. That's why in death, what happens? The spirit separates from the flesh. We take the flesh to the grave. Yes, we do. And return it to the earth where it came from." Yes. But now the spirit, even the priest performs one right. They never took note of what they say. Dust to dust, ash to ash. That is the flesh. But the soul, which is the spirit to the creator. So when we separate mm. in death, is a separation. Man does not die. It's the flesh that dies. You know? Mm -hmm. But the soul, which is the God, the man, the house of the spirit does not die. And when that soul goes back, that's the one that gives account. That's why the scriptures never said the flesh that dies, that sin shall die. He said, the soul that sin it, soul. it shall That's die. It. So he said, when this, he said, these two lusts fight war against the other. He said, and the flesh. So we have always been in this war. Internally. Is, internally. Yes. Every time. Every, I mean, every soul, yeah. every heart, every. Uh, yes. Has always been in war with war themselves. With itself. Mm -hmm. Because the choice is, which choice do you make? Yeah. Do you want to commit crime? Do you want to walk a straight path? Your earning maybe $20, $10, $15 an hour. 
you calculate what you make in a month, then somebody comes say, hey man, you know, if you can help me push this stuff, you make $100,000 in a day. That's what you cannot make in a year. The flesh now say, man, if you get that, you get yourself a beautiful condo, you change your car, your <laughs> car will improve, you have yourself a big ride. You gotta have all, a yard. All you gotta have a yard. All in the there. beautiful babes in the yes. environment belong yes. to you. Yes. 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 Say, man, that's sweet. So I wish I could do it. But the spirit will tell you, hey, remember whatever you're doing has a consequence. Exactly. Hold, the consequence. Yes, mm -hmm. hold back. That is the spirit controlling mm -hmm. the flesh. And that the spirit is what we call the still small voice mm. that restricts us whenever we want to go out of line. And when we obey that voice of a spirit which is God in us, yeah. every other thing will come true. And that is the secret of immortality, letting that spirit guide us at every step of the way. Remy and I were talking before your arrival about going back home to your parents. And when you leave your mom and dad's house and you come back on vacation you fall right back in the mode or the habit that you had when you were home because remember says he goes he doesn't stay out all night when he goes back <laughs> to mom and dad's house he has respect for that household so he comes in at whatever your curfew was remy mm -hmm. <laughs> and Remy, Remy says that. I still can't stay out of my house. Yeah. So I was explaining this kind of thing to him. He yeah. Like, I still have to do, you know, because when we go to your grandparents, I, I, I have a curfew. I have friends who will say, come on, man. I got No. <laughs> you fall back into that curfew or into the days of what happened when you were had to be at home mm -hmm. and had a curfew. But today we don't, we don't give our children curfews. You know, the society, that's why we still say we're in such a permissive society. Permissive, we, in yes. the In the nature of our trying to accommodate, in the name of trying to make our children and our words unnecessary ha unnecessarily happy, mm -hmm. we create rooms, you know? The Bible, when it said, spare the rod and spoil the child, it was not talking about the rod as a can or whip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is not the rod. The word is the tongue. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. When your child, many of us, my brother, you can be a witness, Angelo. You can easily remember what your father told you when you committed an error. He sit you down, son. You see, A, B, C. If you do this and that and that, these are the consequences. Mm -hmm. If you follow this and that, these are the benefits. Even if the man is gone for 20 years, whenever you want to do that, your subconscious will bring back that memory. My father told me. Right. My mother told me. That's right. Yes, and that brings equally why the word is a channel whereby blessings and curses are passed along. The blessing your father gives you blessings will carry and you curses. to your life. Yes. Yeah. And the curse, maybe you offended, carries on true till eternity also. Unless at a point in time it is broken. So when he says spare the rod and spoil the child, when the father is morally alert and conscious and realizes that no matter what the society says, you, the parents, are the ones God is going to hold responsible. That is a powerful statement. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because now I have noticed in our society, the young killer, that 17, 18 years old, that killed all of these people, mm -hmm. uh, they're now holding the parents responsible for buying it. But don't you think we're about 50 years too late? Well, it's not. there's no time it's late. Okay. You know why I say no time is late? They say it, if it starts to be good today, because there must always be a starting point, and whatever mistake we learn in life, we learn from experience. There's nothing that is evil. Okay, okay. Everything gives experience. That's why when you fall in moral, in finances, in whatever, you get up. And when you get up, pick some knowledge and experience from your falling so that you don't repeat it a second time. Cool. You know. That's why they say second time you become compound fool, a bloody fool. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. But when you make that mistake, like parents today, it has become obvious that whether America, whether humanity likes it or not, we must go back to the original institution, the family. God yes. knew why he yes. said, honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because your father and your mother are the first images of God you saw on this earth plane. They are the one who mold you. Your mother makes sure you can sit, you can crawl, you can stand, you can, your speech is corrected, you mm -hmm, have basic mm -hmm. education until you get to the, God, the you know, it's not a mistake that the Lord made it that you must be 18 
before you qualify to be an adult. And by 21, now you've come to decision-making age. Meaning that between the ages of 1 to 17 years and 11 months and 30, 31 days, somebody <laughs> is given the responsibility to mold you to like mold a you. clay into the shape that will be both beneficial to you as an individual and in your relation with the society. Because in the society, it's either you're anti-social or you are one with the society. If you're good in the society, they call you an, a good citizen, right? But if your nat 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 nature is negative, what it impacts on you, it destroys your image, yeah. impacts on your yeah. family, and destroys the environment. So the parents owe that responsibility to themselves. They may not believe in God, it's immaterial. Yeah. But they owe that responsibility to themselves and to the society. And to society. When you finish that, you've done the work for God. Whether you're an agnostic, an atheist, you may not believe that there is no God. You may believe that God does not exist, no problem. Government recognized it. That's why they gave them a day. They called their public <laughs> holiday All Fools Day. The Bible said the fool said in his heart, there is no God. So they gave them a day of fools. So believe in your no God existence. But one thing is, whether you like it or not, morality, yes. social responsibility, <clears throat> decency in existence, in harmony, in relationship, is an ordained law of nature that is prevalent in every environment and every institution. An ordained law. Wow, this is Archbishop Joe. We love him over here. And today we have Sam with the brother Sam with it. We're going to take a little bit of a break because I still need to cover some more current events with the Archbishop. And you don't want to miss it. I'll be right back. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That is a... Uh...
And we are back with my special guest, Archbishop Joe and Brother Sam. And we're back, getting back on track. One of the things that makes this show so popular, most of you already know this, is the fact that we like the idea that we have religious leaders that will allow us to talk about current events and put it in total perspective with the Bible, which is how old? How old is the Bible? 2,000 years old? Yeah, 2022 years. If you're 22 years. Yeah. And this segment, we've had a, a great time educating the people, making you think. We've talked about the, our permissive society. We've talked about self-hate. We've been given scriptures for you to read to put that in perspective. There's no way to wonder about it. There's no way to guess about it. It's all there. So we were talking at the break, Bishop Joe, about, well, the permissive society, but what about all of the fraud and the uh, deceit that exists? You know why I laugh at fraudsters? There's nothing you do against a man you don't do against yourself. The fraudster is not cheating anybody but himself. <laughs> yeah. yeah? Okay. That's what they don't know. And I'll tell you what leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the founder of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, told us. Brotherhood and of star. the Cross is star. star, yes. yes. He said, for one dime, you steal from somebody or you deceive somebody to collect or you dupe somebody to collect. From your spiritual account, 10 dimes are taken away. Wow. Say, Say that, that again. I'm like Remy now. Yeah. You've got to repeat that. He said, for one dime, one dime, you take from somebody either by deceiving him or cheating him or duping him or her, 10 dimes are taken out of your spiritual account. That means whatsoever you do to somebody, the law of attraction, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 said it. Say, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. That whatsoever a man sows, the same he shall reap. So you do not sow to, your, to another person's detriment. The man that told you they collect, okay, they keep collecting. But at the end of the day, the life we live on earth is very finite, very narrow life. Very, very, very small. We talk a generation as being 2,000 years, right? Now man is living only 70 years. The other day I did the calculation on my phone and found out that 70 years of existence of a man on earth in relationship to the generational time span is 1 over 28. 1, one, one over, over 28? 1 over 28? 1 28th of, of a, a, a generation of a generation is a man's lifespan on earth. Did I say that right? 1 28th yes. of a... Generation. Of a generation, yes. It's a man's lifespan on earth. So if that be the case, and for a short span of maybe 50, 60 years, mm -hmm. you waste all your labor gathering dust. I know why I call it dust. Gold is processed from the earth. Diamond is a rock. Silver is from the earth. Name whatever man has. You gather dust. And when you came into wow. the world, you came naked. You came with nothing, not even a boxer. You know, <laughs> and you spend all your labor yes. compromising your spiritual destiny by gathering all those pieces of metal, bits and pieces, which we convert. This is wood, we call it table. Different thing is processed, man mm -hmm. made it mm -hmm. into whatever we find them, right? Then one fine morning again, you give up. And as you're going, everything you gathered, you drop them behind. Steve Jobs. Let me quote him in, when he was suffering from his cancer that took his life. Uh -huh. He said one day he was meditating. He saw that everything he had sweated for were useless. He walked, he got his own posh car, lived in mansions, but he found out that whether you drive a $3 million car or you drive a $3,000 car, you drive on the same road and you go to the same distance. <laughs> it's on well, the same road. Yes, you, you go the same distance. Whether you, you wear a $3,000 wristwatch, or thirty dollar wristwatch, it tells the same time. Whether you wear the most expensive cloth from the best designers, and the other one picks from the what do you call it? Um, the, uh, yes, well, <laughs> it, it, well, it's the same. It's the same cloth. It covers your nakedness. Yeah. Whether you yes, eat from yes. Waldorf Astoria, or you eat on the roadside cafe, is food gives you the same nourishment. And the irony of all this is, no matter what you ate. There was an incident that happened sometime two years ago. The richest man in Kuwait died. If you see his warehouse of gold, it's more than treasure of many countries. He has gold-plated cars, gold-plated aircraft, gold-plated yacht. But the day he died, they buried him in a small community cemetery. 
<laughs> no slab, nothing but a piece of wood, the rot is slim. That's all. That's it. That's it. So everything he accumulated on earth, he said in the book of Job chapter 1 verse 6 or 7, he said, naked came I into the world, and naked, I and naked will I depart. So all your struggling for your duping, your stealing, your cheating, swindling, lying, you're just gathering dust that has no benefit. You just said something. Your spiritual account will be depleted. Will be depleted for all of the fraud and deceit. And I, and I love messages where I remember stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people probably analyze that same way. So you can remove money from your spiritual account. Yes. Because whatever you give, you know, in Matthew 25. Matthew 25. From verses 31 to 46. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave a classic example on the judgment day. He said, in that day when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, that he shall gather all humanity, he will keep the sheep on the right hand, the mm -hmm. goat on the left. Then to the sheep he tell them, come you that is beloved of my Father, receive what I have for you. He said, because I was hungry, you fed me. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick and in prison, you visited me, and in other circumstances, they asked him the question, when did we see you in these circumstances and do this thing to you? He said, in as much as you have done it to the least fortunate of my brethren, yeah. you have done same to me. The other one, he said, depart, you never did anything, any of this for me. He said, well, how come? He said, because you did not do it to the A, B, C, and D. Now, whatever you take from people, you take away from yourself. And the problem humanity have is they don't believe that there's reincarnation. So they felt everything exists in this existence. No. It is a natural They don't believe law. in reincarnation. They don't believe in reincarnation, but the scriptures confirm that reincarnation exists. And when you come back, you pay your price. Some mm -hmm. people come into the world from rich homes, they are left billions. But yeah. as soon as the parents or benefactors die, the whole thing disappears from their hands because they are not qualified for it. Whatever you sow in your past lifetime, you it carries will. over. So even in this lifetime, at a point, everything you get, there's a sieve that takes them away from you. When they disappear, some people started very flamboyant and rich through fraud and so on, and they ended up in misery. Nothing even to account for all they acquired. Yes. They start their suffering on earth yes. before they're even transferred. So the fraudster is not duping anybody but himself. The fraudster, oh my goodness. And that is so profound because we all know people that have had money, riches, uh, everything, and they have lost it all. I yes. mean, the gentleman that's in prison right now, where he ended up hanging himself, I, I don't need to call his name, mm -hmm. because he was doing something with young girls, was worth $700 million, has an, had an estate of $700 million. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, he just ended up hanging himself while he was in jail. You're and hanging take... himself, that is a double punishment. A double punishment. Yeah, because taking his own life now, he cannot give himself life. True. And that, so he's mocking at God. Mm -hmm. Everybody's reading his story here, but nobody knows what is happening beyond the veil. He is Bishop Joe, and Brother Sam has come. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. Uh, he's going to be right back. I can't let him go. It's like you're holding on to the tiger. <laughs> and uh, we have talked about so many subjects. I am going to close this show because I have to tell you what a great audience you are. I have to tell you how important these sessions are. And in the meanwhile, in the meanwhile, just be good to each other. We'll be right back. We'll be back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you. Bishop Joe. <laughs> <sighs>